Hi there everyone, Lars here with another Amphibia review and analysis brought to you by Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. And today I am going to try once again to do a video that doesn't turn into 15 minutes of me rambling right here. Again, this is an attempt to see if we can possibly crank out reviews and analyses uh, that follow shows as they come out. So, trying again for this week as we look at the new episodes of Commander Anne and Spryvy. So, in these episodes, there is a lot going on. And I just want to say, first and foremost, I love the new world aesthetic that we have here in Amphibia. I think it's really, really awesome to see the more medieval aesthetic that we had seen in Seasons 1 and 2 now merge with the futuristic cyberpunk stuff going on right here. This is a great merger. It honestly works for Amphibia, and I'm just really looking forward to seeing more of this. Now, to dive into the episode Commander Anne, this was a great episode to follow up with Sasha's redemption story. In this episode, we clearly see that Sasha is becoming the hero that we need her to be, that she needs to be for herself, for the world, and for her friends. This episode obviously deals with her <laughs> trying to process something that she has very deeply internalized. Just how bad of a friend she was. That she was manipulative. That she was the leader not because she was a great leader, but because she liked being in control. This was something I brought up in my four friendships analysis that I did for Amphibia a while back where I said, one of Sasha's most toxic traits as an individual is that she needs to be in control. And here she is giving up control to Anne, even though it's probably not the best choice to make. But she does it, and she is there to motivate and encourage and stand by Anne, for better or for worse, because she is honestly trying to make good on something that she had done very, very wrong. So Anne is made the commander to go out on this quest to destroy a factory that is using the crazy little mushroom spores to control creatures i like that we get a nod to the mushroom guy again to gary <laughs> because right here this was a villain that i was wondering what are we going to do with this guy especially as things are growing bigger and bigger and bigger what part does gary have to play in all this because there's no way that you can just leave this hanging well lo and behold we finally get our answer as to what happened with gary and i'm actually pretty okay with this right here. Gary is finally destroyed, and that mind control is done away with, at least the factory is. Who knows what other kinds of things are being mind controlled out there on Amphibia, and it, this also helps to enhance the danger that King Andreas and the core pose, because they managed to take a very dangerous villain and twist him to become an asset in their army. Now, overall, within this episode, the most important thing is that Anne and Sasha have real, honest communication. This is probably the first time in the entire series thus far where the two of them have been 100% honest and open with each other, and it is beautiful. I love that Anne has finally gotten to a point where she can read the room, where she understands people better, and she can be the friend that she needs to be to support them. That is what Anne does for Sasha, and Sasha reciprocates that, and basically takes on the role that she is really born to be. She is born to be the leader, but now she will not be the manipulative girl that she had once been. This is great character development for Sasha, and it makes me a little bit worried because I wonder, okay, now that we see Sasha getting so much development, what about Marcy? What kinds of lengths and hoops is Marcy going to have to go through and jump through in order to catch up with Anne and Sasha who've been going through so much character progression over the course of the series? That'll be interesting to see later on down the road. And I want to highlight something here that most people probably missed. That is very important that Sasha becomes the commander of the Wartwood Resistance, but that Anne remains Wartwood's hero. This is the dynamic of commander and champion. Most often we seem to combine the two, and while there are definitely characters who can be both, I'm looking at you, Dalinar Colon. Ah, you sexy man, you. Mm perfect commander and champion all rolled into one not every character is meant to be 
both. And actually, it's really good in a war setting to split up roles amongst very capable individuals. We have Grime as a lieutenant to Sasha. We have Sasha now as the commander over the entire resistance. And we have Anne as the hero, motivator, and champion of the people of Wartwood. And as we'll get into the episode Sprivey, all the different frogs and toads serve in various functions to help the resistance. This is really, really good. Most often, people who write war stories just lump everyone together, say, you are now soldiers, go and die in battle. And that can be really cool or really interesting in some cases, but that's not very realistic. And it then lacks the nuance necessary to really bring out the drama of being at war. So right now, Amphibia Season 3 is doing a fantastic job of bringing out those little bits of nuance that really heighten the tension and show just how well organized the rebellion is. So the episode Commander Anne, boom, stamp of approval from Lars. Now, as we jump into the episode Sprivey, this is a very interesting one because this one is mostly about relationships. And no, I am not talking about Anne and Sasha. I see you shippers out there. I saw this instantly. And I still stand by what I said. I honestly don't think that you're going to get much in anything about any other relationships other than the relationships that were established earlier on in the series. We just don't have the time. And honestly, it feels like the episode Sprivey is actually a jab back at the shippers being like, okay, so here we have this beautiful, sweet couple of Sprague and Ivy. They work extremely well together. In fact, Sprig and Ivy meet all the criteria of what you actually want in a fantastic ship. They are, it's not toxic. They work very well together. There's a lot of charisma. There's a lot of support behind it. They grow together as characters. It's all good. And yet it comes across as annoying. The show highlights this. Why? Well, not just because they're being basically preteens in love, but because this relationship actually hinders them on certain levels from fully becoming who they need to be. In this episode, Sasha leads a campaign against fortifications that prevent Wartwood from linking up with the rest of Amphibia and bringing in much needed supplies for the resistance. So in order to bring down these weapons, she brings along some of her best troops, Sprig and Ivy being a part of that. However, she wants them to split up. And this episode is fantastic because of how it brings in so many different elements from different episodes from seasons one, two, and three, all to show just how much these characters have grown, but also how much they can grow if they are separate. This is an element of writing romance that many people, especially novice writers, seem to miss out on. Having couples get together is fantastic. It really is. It's so much fun to write. But if your character's development is tied just into them getting together into a relationship, then it will always remain two-dimensional and somewhat shallow. Instead, one of the best things that you can do, especially in a good, healthy relationship, is to have the characters split up for a little while, not necessarily that the relationship ends, but rather that they go off and they have to work on different things. And by doing that, we get to see their growth independent of someone who is very important to them. That is actually what this episode gives us. It gives Sprig and Ivy a chance to showcase their skills and their ability to grow and learn apart from each other, especially in an environment where they're so close together and want to be together. This kind of reminds me of the adventures that Randall Thor and his wives go through in the series The Wheel of Time because like you're thinking like oh yes Rand's going to get together with this girl and then with this girl oh now he's also together with this girl yay oh it's so great this polyamorous relationship and yet the series actually takes great pains to split them up have them go on different quests and show just how much they can grow and be independent of each other and it actually makes them coming back together so much sweeter and better because we recognize now who they are as an individual and what they can now be together as a couple. And that's what we get here with the episode Sprivey. So yeah, overall within these episodes, there's not been anything necessarily super groundbreaking in terms of the overall plot. Really the most important thing is how characters are growing and how all these different elements from throughout the entire series so far are coming together. 
Obviously, the biggest thing so far is how Sasha, as an individual, is growing, developing, and becoming better. I am so looking forward to how she and Anne are continuing to play off each other in the future to continue to become just better friends. This is what we've been waiting for. We've been waiting for this reconciliation. We've been waiting for this friendship to be redeemed. And we are finally at that point. We can now see who Anne and Sasha truly are when they are in a healthy relationship. And that's the core of Amphibia. Toxic versus healthy relationships. Amphibia has done a lot of the legwork to show how toxic relationships can be redeemed. And now we can see those redeemed relationships in practice and i am super excited for that so that's going to do it for this quick review and analysis right here if you have your own thoughts about the newest episodes of amphibia please leave them in the comment section down below i'll be reading through all of them and engaging with you guys and if there's other things about amphibia or about other stories that you would like us to talk about please let us know we'd love to get into the weeds of whatever you guys wish to talk about if you're looking for more writing advice please check out our other videos here on youtube and especially our podcast episodes found on podbean itunes google play spotify the work we have writing exercises over at our Pinterest page, and we would love to have conversations with you over on our social media, at our Discord, and also over at our subreddit. Links for all that stuff and more are down in the description below. And until the next episode, y'all, keep on hopping and juice.